being behind the wheel of a traditional style British sports car will surely get you noticed. These vehicles combine modern performance with classic styling that dates back to the turn of the last century. Even the inner construction is traditional, with the car's body frame handcrafted out of wood. The first models in the early 1900s were three-wheelers with motorcycle engines. It wasn't until the mid-1930s that these hip sports cars acquired a fourth wheel and a four-cylinder automotive engine. But one thing hasn't changed in more than a century, the wood frame construction. In the factory's wood shop, workers glued together six millimeter thick ash panels to produce a three-ply lamination with which to make the frame's curved components. To make each wheel arch, they clamp a lamination into a rounded jig for a couple of hours. The glue dries, locking the curve in the wood. They make the frame's front section out of three solid pieces of ash. Triangular wood jigs align the frame while workers screw in a solid ash rail on each side. These rails connect to back framing and form the bottom of the car's door openings. Two vertical rails form the side of the openings on which the door will hinge. Using a spoke shave, workers fine-tune each door frame so that it fits perfectly into the openings they've just constructed. Then they mount the door frame with strong steel hinges. They submerged the finished frame in wood preservative, giving the chemical plenty of time to thoroughly penetrate the pores of the wood. This will prevent the frame from rotting. In another part of the factory, workers assemble the engine, transmission and drive shaft to the car's galvanized steel chassis, then mount the front and rear axles and wheels. They'll switch the brass wheel nuts for fancy chrome ones later on. Back to the bodywork now. They cut an aluminum panel to the shape of the door frame, only wider all around. Clamp it onto the door frame, hammer down this door skin as it's called, over the frame edge all around. They remove the clamps, then peel off the panel's protective covering. After paneling the rest of the wood frame in aluminum, they reinstall the door, gently tapping the hinge pin in place. Now they lower the paneled body onto the chassis. The only wooden parts not covered with metal are the rear wheel wells. Unlike the rest of the body frame, these are made of water-resistant plywood. Two bonnets form the car's hood. To make each one, a craftsman feeds aluminum through rollers to curve it. Then he massages it over an old log that this factory's been using for this purpose since the 1930s. They put each panel through a press that cuts louver holes. In the old days, the purpose of louvers was to ventilate the engine, but now they're mostly for style. The two finished bonnet panels go on either side of a central hinge, forming a car hood that opens like butterfly wings. The body gets a paint job. Then they trim the car's interior with genuine leather, cutting and stitching every piece by hand, and affixing it to the wood frame. They make door seals by wrapping leather around rubber tubing. And finally, they refit the wings, now painted, over the front and back wheels. The front wings have shells, which house the car's headlights. Workers install the radiator at the front and top it with a cover called a cowl. Then, the electronic dashboard instruments, gear shift, windshield, mirrors, and of course, the steering wheel. They also attach the hood, handcrafted from either vinyl or mohair, to a tubular frame. After installing the leather-trimmed seats, they take the vehicle out for a test drive. Then, upon return, put it through a meticulous inspection inside and out. After a wax polishing, this fancy fusion of technology and tradition finally gets the green light. <laughs>